Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Puzzle Agent 2. We are in Sheriff Barg's office. Uh, we ran into a puzzle last time uh, involving the light in the room. I may as well just go on it to show you. Uh, it's called Sheriff's Office and the deal is help Nelson get to the other side of the room unseen. Drag the office furniture around to block the light sources and create a safe path for Nelson to walk through. Um, yeah, this this has um, got me quite stumped. It's been a few days since I recorded the last one, so I'm hoping coming into it with a fresh mind is going to help. Um, I theorised in the last one that we've got to get this guy here over into this position, and I think that probably is right. I was, I was looking back while I was editing and trying to figure out where I might have been going wrong, and it seems like I was sort of boxing this in. Um, we can move that way. I mean, I think really what I'm going to have to do is just slow this down and plan ahead. Almost like a game of chess rather than just moving things and then reacting to what I'm doing. So, we could move this to like here, which I think is what I was doing, and then I was moving these around. But then of course you run into a situation where you can't really like get these guys to move. I think this is where I was before wasn't it like I was getting to here and then run into a situation where I can't you know get these things to be able to get this in here so I think doing it that way is not the right way to go um, if we move that there is that gonna help yes I think it is actually because then we can slide that down we can block that, and then block that, and I think that's it. <laughs> okay, so I think I was just literally just moving the wrong thing, and boxing myself in. I think that's right, isn't it? Like, we've blocked the light here, here, and there, so we should just be able to walk through. Yeah, we're good. I think. Fingers crossed, anyway. Yeah, okay. Sometimes just coming into these things after a, a little break really helps you see them differently. Um, yeah, I don't know. I certainly get sort of stuck into a pattern of doing the same behaviours over and over again with these types of puzzles, so that seems to work. How? They, the key to they key to this puzzle is to get the upside down L couch to the lower right side of the room. From there, the other pieces can be arranged to block out the rest of the lights. Yeah, okay. That is what I was saying. I see what's in this cabinet. A bunch of files. <clears throat> Hello, Agent Tethers. Oh, he's here. Tribes, Sheriff Bog. How long have you been standing? Randall Scruffman told me you might be paying my office a visit. Scruffman. I'm sorry, it's just I really needed to see how bad this missing person problem is. Everything I got about missing people is in those files. Uh, thanks. Why is he helping us? I'm slightly weirded out by the fact he's helping us at all. I wonder if the rest of the Scoggins police force is as competent as Sheriff Bog. We've never seen any of these people. So there's another puzzle there, which I'm guessing is the one that we've got to do. <laughs> Did Glory Davner ever tell you she suspected the Brotherhood of being involved in the disappearances? Glory's a confused young lady. The Brotherhood helps people, whether it's with personal troubles or with what the fancy doctors call an addiction to puzzles. <laughs> she told me that you're working with the Brotherhood. Rumors. Unprovable rumors. Just find what you need in those files and then be on your way. I'm I'm gonna see surprised he's open to us looking at these files. With all due respect, Sheriff, these files aren't exactly comprehensive. There are no dates. What's in the files is everything I got, Tethers. Missing persons. Discover the secret message by placing the names of Scoggins missing residents uh residences? What's going on with like some of the text at this part of the game? That should be missing resident. TS, right? In the order they disappeared, starting from the first to go missing. Yeah, it should be. I don't... It's kind of weird. Note on missing persons in Scoggins. Isaac was the last to be kidnapped before Daryl, who was kidnapped last. Okay. Isaac was the last to be kidnapped before Daryl. Okay, so Daryl went after Isaac, but, I... but Daryl was last. Holdor and Will were kidnapped before Ted. Ted was not kidnapped fourth. Will was not kidnapped first. 
Okay, fine. Oh, it's this. This is the one that we started doing earlier, but then got interrupted, right? So, we know last was um, Daryl. So, that's fine. We know before Daryl it was Isaac. Uh, let's go back to the... Was it the rules? Yeah. Isaac was the last to be kidnapped before Daryl, who was last. Okay. Hordor and Will were kidnapped before Ted, but Ted was not fourth. So Ted couldn't have been there, so Ted must have been third. And we know that, that Hordor and Will were kidnapped before Ted, but Will was not first. So Will must be second, Hordor must be first, and Barney must be fourth, right? Tetordotir. The hell does that mean? I think that should be right, shouldn't it? Will wasn't first, but was before Ted. Ted had to go third. Yeah, I think that's fine. What the hell is this about, though? I mean, it's right. Okay, how? Gathering the known relationships of when certain people went missing, you were able to piece together the order. But what could Tetor Dottir mean? Good question. Aha, uh -huh. it spells a name? Teeter Dotter. Teeter Dotter? Did you say Teeter Dotter? Uh, maybe? Hmm, that's probably Melkorka Teeter Dotter. Huh? Yeah, she's a strange one. Keeps her herself. Nobody in town really knows her. Is she one of the missing people? Missing? No, I can't say anyone would miss her. She lives in the old Teterson house over on the west side of town, near Valda's Inn. Then I'd better find out what she knows about all these disappearances. Yeah. Putting my furniture back in order and fix the lock on your way out, Kevin. <laughs> We're not doing that. Sorry. Has you got anything else to what say? What do you know about this woman, Melkorka Teeter daughter? Korka? It's like I said, she lives on the west side of town near Valdas. Nothing else. That, then. You'll have to find out from her directly. Okay, fine. Well, we're not putting your furniture back. Wait. Okay, I thought we were actually going to have to put the furniture back. Corker's house. Okay, nice. What have we got here? So we can go in. Ooh. Oh, is that the eraser factory from the last one? At least the eraser factory is up and running again. Yeah. Scoggins' only exports are erasers and weirdness. <laughs> that is true. Nice house. Assuming Sheriff Bog wasn't sending me on another wild goose chase, I've arrived at the house of the mysterious Melkorka. I'm still not sure how she ties into the disappearances, but she's the only lead I've got. According to the sheriff's description, she sounds like a recluse. Probably the town's resident gossipy spinster. That is a big assumption to make. It's gonna be eating his words Good now, evening, isn't he? Agent Tethers. I see you found my note. <laughs> Quickly. Come inside before they see us. <laughs> Check this place I out. I see you're a this puzzle fan, Miss Teeter Daughter. I dabble, keeps the brain sharp. And my friends call me Korka. I would hope you're a friend, Agent Heathers. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you a drink or a crossword? This is the first time we've ever seen him speechless. Just the facts, ma'am. All right, let's check out this place. Oh, my God, there's puzzles everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Right, so we've got we've got literally puzzles everywhere. Um, so we've got something here, something here. Um, is there anything else? I don't, I don't know if this is the, the way out or whether... We came in that way. I think it's probably the way out. We can look at some, looks like maybe like board games or something. 
We can talk to her. Should we check out? Because these look like optional puzzles. Should we check these out? Puzzle. Digits in space. What are the next two digits in this sequence? 31, 41, 59, 26. Um, 31, 41, 59, 26. It's, it's pi, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure it's pi. Uh, so 3.141592655 five something. <laughs> Having to go back to school days here. Hang on. Um, I'm sure it's pi. What are the next two digits in the sequence? 3.141592653? I this is kind of evil because if you don't if you don't know Pi How are you supposed to know what to do here? I maybe like a hint tells you, I guess. But I never know how to feel about these types of puzzles where a game assumes you know something. Because not everybody knows pi, it's especially like the additional digits. Normally when people refer to pi, they just say 3.14, right? And I think, I think the next two is 5.3. But if you didn't know that, how would you know what to put in there? I mean, I've probably said this and it's, it's not 5.3 and I've remembered wrong, but... I haven't though. <laughs> it's, it's all in there somewhere. <laughs> Almost two decades ago, but it's in there. Okay. The puzzle presented the first eight non-rounded digits of pi. The next two are five for you. How, but if you don't know that, how are you supposed to know what to put in there? I don't know. Like that, that type of puzzle never really sits that well was with me. a tricky me. one. Because it's it's assuming outside knowledge that can't be found in the game, and unless it's like hidden somewhere, if you look at something in here, then I, I just don't see board games, and they're all for two players only. <laughs> Marry me. <laughs> oh, I I mean you should try the new uh, strategy game. Marry me. It, it, it's fun for the uh, whole family. So, I mean, what do you guys think, like, about that type of puzzle? Because, I don't know. I mean, you could Google it, right? You could do, you could go, uh, if, if you're able to work out that it's pi, and you don't know the, the digits, you could maybe go, you know, I'll Google it, and then... But it's assuming that you know it's pi. I don't, I don't know, it's just... It doesn't sit well Is with me. Is this the latest from Hanji Monosaki? Rated four dragons, they said. Monosaki-sensei's lost his edge. I thought it was kind of tricky. I don't know. We did it pretty quickly, didn't we? Can't remember, honestly. Right, what have we got here? We've got another well, one. Well, look at what we have here. Coins in a box. In the first box is a penny, the second box is a dime, and the third box is a penny and a dime. What coin goes into the fourth box? Uh, okay. So... We've gone that, that... So it's a, it's a sequence. So we've gone that, that, then that and that. Uh, so is it the colours? Let's think. So we've got... Let's look at this again. In the first box is a penny, the second box is a dime, and the third box is a penny and a dime. What coin goes in the fourth box? I mean, it's gone, so it's gone like bronze, silver, bronze, silver, gold? Is that right? Yeah, okay. Nice, that wasn't too difficult. Okay, how? 
The coin's values represent successive binary numbers. The penny is 001, the dime is 010, the, pen the dem penny and dime is 011, and the dollar is 100. Yep, so it's the, it's the value of the um, coins. So, sort of what I was saying, but not really. <laughs> it still works, but yeah, it's, it's the value of the coins. So, but you relate it to binary. Pretty cool. On we go. Well, that takes care of that one. It does take care of that one. How much time do we have left? We have no time left, so we're going to have to talk to Corka in the next one and see if um, Nelson's little crush leads anywhere. Um, I'm going to say probably not, but you never know. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Termini Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Kumadim, Paul Leon, Flossy the Sheep, Joncon555, Chrissy, and Paul James, and I'll see you next time.